A Stuart 10H steam engine build. Part 12. Machining the eccentric blank in the lathe and fettling the eccentric rod and strap assembly. Drilling the eccentric rod hole and shaping the end. Drilling the valve fork and fitting the parts together using a very small stud. This is the eccentric sheave. It's a piece of steel, 5 eighths of an inch in diameter. This doesn't belong in this episode because it's not what I'm going to be working on. All I'm doing here is cleaning up the outer edge because it was rusty using some wet or dry sandpaper. So now it accurately measures 5 eighths of an inch external diameter. And here I'm fitting the pre-machined eccentric strap in place. This is actually wrong. Whoever machined this machined it 5 eighths of an inch diameter and it's a perfect fit on the eccentric sheave. And it's really no big deal, you can do it this way, but what you're supposed to do before you machine the part is sew it in half, clean up the edges, and then solder it back together, then machine the 5 eighths of an inch diameter hole through the middle. And you also need to drill the holes to hold the whole thing together, just like the big end. But in this case, it really doesn't matter. In this scale, it's a little bit fiddly. And the good thing is, by making it this way, I will be able to machine an oil reservoir in the top. There will be more information about this component in the next episode, when I also show how to make the eccentric sheave. What I'm doing with the sheave at the moment is making a very small centre drill hole, as you can see here, in the end. This centre hole needs to be quite shallow, because what I'm about to do is face across the front. I need quite a good finish on this side of the eccentric sheave. But I need to leave some remnants of the hole in the centre for when I mark out the position 3 seconds of an inch away from the centre, which is the throw of the eccentric. Once again, much more about this in the next episode. Suffice to say, I now have a cleaned up eccentric sheave, which is quite shiny all the way around. After I faced the end of the eccentric sheave, I used a piece of wet or dry sandpaper to really make it shine. When you're doing this, be very careful because your fingers are quite close to the revolving chuck. Even a Myford's revolving chuck can do severe damage. Now comes the very boring and very tedious part. Using a rotary scourer at a fairly low speed, I'm cleaning up the eccentric rod which is also part of the eccentric strap. At this stage though, this rotary scourer didn't really do much. It still left the marks in the part, although they were a good bit shinier. The marks I refer to are the casting marks, and the only way to remove them is to either file them off like this, which takes a long time, or cheat and use a one-inch belt sander but I must warn you that you have to have plenty of practice at doing this, otherwise you can very easily ruin the part in seconds. Try it on a piece of scrap metal first, and you will soon find out that the main problem is the part gets very hot very quickly, so you need to hold it in some sort of thermal insulation. Usually a cloth will do the trick. After a while I went back to the needle file, because there were certain areas where the belt sander wasn't quite accurate enough on the edges to get the finish that I wanted. I didn't want everything to be slightly rounded. Now it's time to drill the hole in the end which will connect the eccentric rod to the valve fork. Here I'm using a centre drill to make the hole just about in the centre. Which is difficult really because the end of this part is not really shaped properly. As you can see there's still the casting sprue on it. So I estimated where I needed the hole to be drilled in such a position subtracting the thickness of the casting sprue on the outside edge. And then of course the part did not fit in the valve fork as you can see here. But nevertheless it's quite neat so I'm going to keep this one. I cleaned it up using the scourer and this was very good at doing that. One of the sides of the valve fork was thicker than the other, so I took this opportunity to level things off. For this, I used a needle file, not the belt sander. These belt sanders are really useful. I have a problem with the one in the second workshop, 
The sanding belts that it uses are slightly larger in diameter than the ones in the main workshop, so I do need to buy some that are the right size. After cleaning up the end of the eccentric rod, it was time to drill the hole in the valve fork and being very careful here to make sure it's in the right place. Normally I would use a small centre drill first, but in this case I decided to go for it straight away with a small drill bit, then a slightly larger drill bit, and each time putting the required pressure on the drill bit to keep it in the centre of the work. Finally, to make sure that everything lined up perfectly, I ran a third drill bit, which is a tiny bit bigger, through both the valve fork and the eccentric rod together. The eccentric rod was too good a fit in the valve fork, and this is not what I need really. It needs to be a perfect fit, but not an interference fit. I filed it down so it all fitted together, and here you see the small stud through the centre. With a nut on each end, this will hold the short stud in position, and of course the stud is not threaded. It is of the plain shank type. After putting the small drill bits back into the drill case, I did this because I get so many questions, I just don't believe it. What do you mean by two drill sizes less than a quarter of an inch? Well, I mean a 732nd. And similarly, apart from being tapping size for 4BA, one eighth of an inch is also tapping size for anything that's 532nds of an inch, etc, etc. I put the small centre drill back in the centre drill box and closed it up. Very soon I will be making the gland nuts for the valve spindle and the piston rod and I thought I would just check that the valve spindle is one eighth of an inch and indeed it is. The final shot is of my trusty micrometer which is still accurate after all these years. And that's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.